We spent a lot of time in our recent project management series talking about meetings. Today, we're going to give you 15 tips to have highly effective meetings. Stay tuned. Don't hang up that phone. We found what you're looking for. Welcome to the Let's Talk Cabling Podcast with Chuck Bowser, RCDD. Well, seeing how we're pulling Category 6A, the most powerful twisted pair in the world. You got to ask yourself this one question. Did I pull 295 or 300 feet? Well, do you feel lucky? Do you punk? In this podcast, you'll learn the differences between a 66 and 110 punch tool, the proper way to install a support cable, along with testing and certifying the cable. What exactly does RCDD stand for? Registered Communications Distribution Designer. Just the expert, you need to ensure your cable plant performs exactly as designed. The elite professional, knowledgeable, and experienced in leading edge ICT design principles. So join us as we talk about the ever-changing world of telecommunications. From ISP to OSP, from copper to fiber, design to installation. Now, send the new guy to the truck for a bucket of dial tone and the cable stretchers while you listen to an informative program on telecommunications. Welcome to the show where we tackle the questions that are submitted by installers, project managers, estimators, designers, IT people, and anybody who needs any to know anything about the ICT industry. On this show, we connect at the human level so we can connect the world. If you're watching this show on YouTube, would you please hit the subscribe button and the bell button to be notified when new new shows are being published? If you're listening to this show on podcasts such as Apple iTunes or Google Play or Amazon uh, shows, would you mind leaving us a review? Hopefully it's a five-star review. If not, get in touch with me. Those readings and those subscribe things help us to beat the algorithm so we can help get this message out to even more people in the ICT community and make a bigger impact on our industry. And also, don't forget, every Thursday night, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, our After Hours Live session. It is multi-streamed to LinkedIn Live and YouTube, where you get your questions answered by your favorite RCDD, Well, that would be me. (laughs) If you happen to miss the live broadcast, not a problem. They are recorded for later consumptions. If you have any questions that you would like to be answered on that show, send them to questions at letstalkcabling.com. While we're talking about the webpage, make sure you go by our webpage, letstalkcabling.com. That's where you can find all of the recorded content, such as our podcasts, our vlogs, and our articles. You can sign up for our newsletters. And also, there's a method there for help supporting this learning platform. As the intro said, we talked about all different kinds of meetings that you're going to have as a project manager. But these tips that I'm going to go over today are going to be valuable to you, even if you're just a lead technician, a project foreman, or some other type of manager, or if you want to be one of those. Knowing how to organize, conduct, and document meetings efficiently is going to help you at all levels of the ICT industry. Again, even from the apprentice up. These 15 meeting tips will be broken down into three major groups today. These groups are going to be organizing the meeting, conducting the meeting, and then finally, documenting the meeting. So the meeting has started long before the first person ever walks into that room and eats that donut off your table. If you are in need of conducting a meeting, here are some pre-meeting tips that's going to help you to have a more effective meeting. Part one, organizing the meeting. Tip number one, know what you want to accomplish. I know that sounds kind of simple, doesn't it? Everybody's time is valuable. Nobody wants to sit in a meeting that just seems senseless or lacking direction. Though almost everybody is sat in one of those kinds of meetings, maybe sometimes even more than one. Put some thought into what you actually want to achieve. Make sure that you state that goal up front. That's important. I'm going to say it again. State your goal up front. This is going to let everybody know the desired outcome from that meeting. Tip number two, develop an agenda. 
Well, the first thing on the agenda is going to be the goal that you just came up with. So the agenda really should just be an outline, not a huge written proposal, something somebody can peruse through pretty easily. The header should include things like the date, the location, and the time of the meeting. It should also indicate who is required to attend that meeting and who's optional because they're not necessarily the same. Just remember, though, this is a plan. And like most plans, <laughs> they're great up to the moment of execution. And then the real fun begins. Tip three, keep the number of attendees to as minimal as necessary. Remember that this meeting is where you're going to want to have open communications and participation. Large meetings tend to feel more like lectures than meetings. I've sat in those. They are boring. And you sit there and wonder, why are you there? It is through open communications and a feeling that everybody's opinion is not only accepted, but valued is where the magic happens in a meeting. Tip number four, make sure to clearly indicate who is the meeting leader. Now, you're probably thinking this is simple. It's going to be the person who has most seniority. No, that's not necessarily who's going to be the person running the meeting. It rather would be the subject matter expert on the subject of the meeting. So you might have a project manager running the meeting where you might have an area manager or a business owner. Tip five, location, location, location. Just like in that old sales adage, it remains true for meetings as well. You're going to want a sterile meeting environment. That doesn't mean free from germs. It means free from disruptions. A huge momentum killer is when somebody comes into your meeting room and takes somebody out of the room to discuss a different topic matter. Then everybody who's remaining in your meeting is wondering, why was that person removed? What are they talking about? Are they talking about me? Is something happening? It literally sucks the air out of your meeting. That's why you want to have a sterile environment. Tip number six, use technology. You heard me right. Use technology. We are in the ICT industry, and we're selling and installing network infrastructure to help customers communicate effectively and better, and, and we should too. We are in the ICT industry. If it is financially or physically impossible to have everybody in the room, Use technology to bridge that gap. There's all kinds of software out there. Microsoft Teams, Zooms, Google Meetings, and plenty of others out there that have developed great platforms thanks to COVID for effective ways to have meetings across large geographic areas. Part two, conducting the meeting. Now it's time for the meeting to actually happen that you spent all this time and effort to plan. But remember, that even the best plan, plan falls into a disarray at times, right? But it's always better. If you plan to fail, you fail to plan. Or fail to plan, you plan to fail. One of those two. Tip seven, start the meeting on time. Do not be late for your own meeting. Nothing says to somebody that their time is less valuable than yours than to be late. One of my favorite tricks to do when I have my own meetings is to never start my meetings at normal times. I would never start a meeting at on the top of the hour or at the half hour. I would always start them at something like 2.20 p.m., 11.10 a.m. You're probably wondering why. That implies precision and it gets the attention of the people whom you're trying to attend that meeting. Tip eight, make sure your meetings stay on topic. You want to have an open conversation that will sometimes lead into side conversations. Side conversations are okay with people inside that room. But if the conversation is off topic or if it's beginning to disrupt your meeting, either by the content that they're talking about or even the loudness of the participants, then just let them know that their conversation, their idea or their comments can be handled offline. Tip number nine, encourage everybody to participate. Now, this can be done through several different ways. Number one, check your attitude at the door. Treat everybody as equals. You want to value the input from everybody. That apprentice who just walked in the room might have something great to add to your project. This kind of reminds me of something, and this is not even off topic here. We did a project one time in Mexico, and we had somebody in the meeting who was construction, not even related to communications. And we had a problem we had to overcome. And they listened to our problem, and they came up with the idea, and they weren't even in communications. If we had not checked our attitude at the door, we probably wouldn't have listened to it, right? I read an article recently. There's a trend now to have what's called standing meetings. 
A standing meeting is where everyone stands the entire time of the meeting. Now, this is thought to basically help participants to be engaged because it doesn't allow them to get too comfortable in their chairs or too comfortable or doing something else or daydreaming. It also helps in making these participants to want to conclude the meeting faster. You want to be done with your meetings faster. Another trick is if you see over a series of meetings that people pick favorite chairs in the room, ask them to switch seats. Or better yet, assign them seats where they wouldn't normally sit. Tip number 10, ask the right questions. There are different kinds of questions. You want to ask open-ended questions. Go beyond the questions that can be answered by a simple yes or no. A good way to start an open-ended question is to start off with how. Why? What? How did that weather impact your project? We'll get you a more detailed explanation than, was your project late? Tip number 11, assign roles to your meeting participants. For example, you might want to designate somebody other than yourself to document the meeting and create the meeting minutes. This is going to give you more focus to managing the meeting, listening to the content, guiding the direction of the meeting. And it's going to help you achieve the stated goal at the beginning of your meeting by keeping you more focused and keeping the participants more focused. They're also going to be more likely to contribute to your meeting. Tip number 12, don't use technology. Wait, wait, hold on. Chuck, you just told me to use technology. I know. But when you it comes time for the meeting, technology can also be a huge distraction. You want proof? Watch a family eating dinner out at a restaurant. Yeah, we've all seen that. Go beyond asking the participants to silence their device. If their device is not critical for the meeting, have them leave their device in a small box at the door. That way it's checked there. This helps remove the temptation to see the latest cute little cat videos on their favorite social media platform, Nobody does that, right? Of course they do. Technology is a distraction. Tip number 13, end the meetings on time. Better yet, end them early. Again, time is one of the few commodities that you can't just give back to somebody. Once you've burnt it up, it is gone forever. If you get good at master your planning and conducting the meeting so that you're able to meet the objective and end your meeting early, people will be less likely than to try to avoid your meetings because they know you value their time. Tip 14, leave the room to spur creativity. Yes, have breakout sessions with brainstorming. This not helps only with the energy and the creativity, but also the participation because everybody feels like they're contributing to the outcome of that meeting. Some of the virtual meeting software packages, Zoom and GoToTraining, have this ability to have breakout rooms, breakout rooms to, include, to, to, create, to improve this creative process. Tip 15, clearly identify any items that are still left open or unresolved. Have a clear action plan on what needs to be completed. Who is responsible for completing those items? And more importantly, when is the completion required by? Remember, clearly defined goals. Task or tip 17, 16, if you're keeping track. Challenge everything. Just because that's the way it's always been done doesn't mean it's right. But I must implore you to exercise caution when you do this because you don't want to come off as someone who's trying to derail the train of progress. It is all right, though, to challenge things like facts, figures, technical feasibility, financial uh, visibility, uh, viability, or even the assumptions that were the driving force of the meeting. Tip 17. Include question and answer sessions to ensure more meaningful engagement from the your meeting participants. Consider extending a Q and A session to match the length of the meeting, which means you might have to develop your timeline even shorter. You might even consider switching up the overall format, where a short meeting followed by a longer Q and A. Depending on this meeting type, this could actually create a virtuous cycle and help with building an enthusiastic team a team that's going to have more productive meetings. Tip number 18, communicate with the meeting participants where they are. Our industry is highly technical, and it contains lots of acronyms. To the layperson, it can seem like a whole new language. 
Make sure to be inclusive in your language, in your conversation. Make sure that you are being sensitive when you think that you're losing some of the members of your meeting. Pay attention to their body language. Are they starting to look like a deer in the headlight look? You don't want to lose them because of industry jargon. And now finally, the final section, documenting the meeting. The meeting is over. That means you're done, right? And not quite. Remember that person that you designated to to take those notes earlier? Yeah. Tip number 19. Well, ensure that those notes are created in a clear, concise, and expedient manner. Get them out to every attendee in that meeting and make sure that you solicit feedback. A trick that I used to use quite often when I used to kick out my meeting minutes was I always put verbiage in my email that basically said something to the effect of, let me know if your understanding is any different from ours or any different from me. That helps spur that conversation. Tip 20, if you've created an action item list and things that need to be done once that meeting is complete, follow up on that. Put it in your calendar so that you don't forget. Once you have a resolution, send that, those updates out to your team members. Now, as we conclude this episode, I hope that you appreciate the five extra tips that I threw in for you because it was only supposed to be 15. I gave you 20. I had way more, but maybe that might be a future show. We'll see. I hit you with a lot of stuff in this episode, and I deliberately, deliberately kept my suggestions at a high level. I didn't want to dive in the weeds like I could have. That is so you can take these tips and apply them to your situation easier. So let me close this show with this this podcast with something to think about before you schedule your next meeting. Make sure you ask these three very important questions. One, is this meeting necessary? Two, who needs to be there? Three, what will the agenda be? So until next time, be safe. That's it for this episode of today's podcast. We hope you were able to learn something. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. Also, leave a rating so we can help even more people learn about telecommunications. Until next time, be safe.